Hey, what's up? So in the create entity adapter series, we covered this case when we have multiple entity adapter states and we want to combine them into the same slice. So this is the shape of the state that it got generated. So we have ideas and entities. These are for the users in this case. And we have comments adapter and post adapter. They are all nested inside of each other. And we have this example uh, for it. So if you are looking to something like this, like combining different and multiple entity adapters into the same slice, maybe check out this uh, video. And this is the code for it. There's a repo, I will put a link in the description for the video and the repo. And by the way, there is an API called Pulax. It's here now, so you can just CD into it. It's in the repo and run it. But let's just uh, forget about that. If you are looking into something like this, like a dynamic generated entity adapter state, so for example, maybe a realistic uh, example on this is a dynamic form. So usually we have static forms, right? The user just fills them, click submit, and that's it. But what if the user creates the form itself? And each form should have its own entity adapter state and reducers. So it's, this is very dynamic. So in this video, I'm gonna show you something like that. And actually, I have, I like, I, I went or I needed to do that uh, in some case in some of the projects that I worked on. So yeah, this is the kind of state we are implementing now. It should be very dynamic. So I'm gonna make things very fast. I'm assuming you are good uh, with JavaScript and you know the Redux toolkit. So just to save some time, I'm gonna create inside my features. So let me close everything. We have this features, right? I'm gonna create a folder called my dynamic form and inside of it, I'm gonna create the component Open it up with some power of the plate. This is this extension in VS Code. Yes, yeah, 7 React Redux and FQL. If you want to just check it out. So this is my component. I'll just import from React suit the button and I think yeah button to a bar. Okay. And I I will import the react redux I use this patch and I use selectors I will leave it like this now let's go and create a slice for this dynamic form so import from the react redux tool from the redux.js toolkit the create slice and create entity adapter so my, our slice will be the following. So name, I'll just leave it the same like this. Initial state, I won't use like an entity adapter then called the get initial state. I'll just leave it for now as an entity object. And for each like form we generate, I'll, it will have its own or it, it, it's, its own in adapter state, right? So for each time we create a part of our slice, we will call the get initial state. I will show you in a second. So this basically will be an empty object. And reducers will be an empty object for now. And let's just export default. You can do a named export, whatever you want. Doesn't matter that much, to be honest. So import. I'll call it like this. So from Yes. Okay, the usual stuff, right? So just assigning the reducer here and that's it. So now if you go to our React app, inside our Redux, you will see this key, my dynamic form, which comes from here, of course. So let's now create our entity adapter. So const, I'll call it my dynamic form adapter. This will be equal to the retained value of const in this function. The select ID will be, oh, like I am expecting, expecting, sorry, and like each entity containing an ID property, right? So each entity an object and containing an ID property, this is how I will generate them. So usually this will come from the backend, right? So when the user, for example, clicks on a button, you will send a request to the backend telling the backend, hey, we need the user generated a new form. 
you are retained by an ID and some information about that form, you will display them dynamically and that's it. So here everything will be on the front end, just to make things simpler. Okay, so, um, yeah, I think this, now let's just go here and do some stuff. So first thing, I'm gonna use the dispatch function. I'm gonna call it like this, I'll assign it to a variable called dispatch. I'm gonna just put a div. You can actually do this. This is a shortcut for React to the fragment. This is like an empty component. If you want just uh, just something that doesn't have any meaning to wrap uh, your all, all your components. So this is a shortcut for that. So we'll have a button, create a dynamic, create entity adapter state. I would just call it like that. Okay, now let's just import this function or this component inside our app. So import features. And of course, let's just wrap this with an empty an into component, the fragment of course, and put that here. So I'm formatting the code like this. Yeah, so let's just check it out. We should see just a button. So each time we click on this, we should have a dynamic entity adapter state inside this slice. It's actually very easy. So let's go to our slice, let's create another reducer called, or let's create a reducer called create a state. It will accept the state. This will be a reference to this state slice, not the whole state. And we will destruct the payload. The payload in this time will be just a single value. It will be the ID. So I'm going to rename the payload using this syntax. I'm renamed it to a variable called ID. Actually, if you hover over it, it will tell you that. As you can see, it's a var ID. Anyway, so state. Now, the idea, as you, as you can see from this image, each ID will be dynamic and it will point to a generated entity adapter state, right? So what we can do, and this actually works in email as well. So we can do this, and this will be equal to the create, to the adapter to get the initial state. And remember, you can put some stuff here. So I can put this. So let's export this. So this, is an, this will generate an action creator with the same name, of course. From sorry equal my dynamic form slice of actions. Let's import that one here. And of course now on a click you will dispatch that. But we need to pass an ID, right? So I think I already installed a package called, not here, it's here. Oh no, I didn't. So there is a package, very cool package called short ID. So npm installed short ID. So that, and basically we will import from the short ID package. That generate function and this just generates random IDs random string IDs okay and let's, let's just call it here and let's just wait until this finishes because this will be undefined yeah come on Okay, I think it's finished. I will close this. So now each time we click on this button, we should see a dynamic state got generated inside that slice. So as you can see, each now like form contains this state, which is an entity adapter state. I think this is very nice. So now the next thing, this for each value or for each key inside this slice, this display a set of buttons to simulate uh, a form, right? So I'm gonna use this, and of course I'm gonna use the use selector first. So const all IDs, and this is the these IDs. 
the keys. So all IDs will be equal to use selectors stat stat dot. If you want to know the key, it's from the store. Nice dynamic form. And I'm gonna return them, or I'm gonna return the keys. Okay. So now dot map. I'm gonna return this. So this will be set all. And we are gonna implement the set all reducer function here. And this will be the ID, and this will be the key here, right? And now style, I'll give it a padding of 20 pixels. It will, it will look very ugly, but it will work. As you can see now, for each form, we have five, right? We have five, and we have them here. So each one of them should dispatch an action that populates the entity adapter state for that specific key. And it's, it's, it's not that hard. So let's come here and say set all, create a function called set all. We accept the state and the payload here will be actually an object containing, or I will destruct from it the ID, which is the ID, the same one as one, the same one here, okay? And an array. And this will be the array that I am going to put it inside that entity adapter. So what I will do, I think I, there's a typo here. So my dynamic form adapter, I'm going to rename it. So dot set all, and this accepts the state you want to behave on. So I'm going to give it the state, then dynamic key, the ID. So go to that slot, to, the, to that generated entity adapter slot in this dynamic slice and modify it and I'm gonna give it the array now for the for this to work I need to export it of course and it's imported here now for example here I'm gonna put on a click we'll give some space I'm gonna dispatch the sit all action creator I'm gonna give it an ID this will be the current ID, so you can actually remove this, and an array. I'll give it an array like this. I'm gonna go to the next line. ID, I'll call the generate function. This is a different ID. Remember, in my adapter, I'm expecting each object to contain an ID, right? And maybe name. I'll also call the generate function, because why not, right? Maybe number. I'll call map to random. Let's create multiple of these. So let's hit refresh. Let's start from the start. I'll start from the beginning. So we have now three dynamic entity adapters. Let's hit sit all here. As you can see, this one will get populated, the first one. These are the entities. These are the IDs for the entities. Now, another time, select all, but or sit all for this one. Which is very um, interesting. So yeah, I think this will maybe give you the basic starting point. You can customize this, maybe use the selectors generated from the entity adapter for each key here. So but this is basically it. This is how this is the starting point from what you want to do. I know it's very simple, but uh, I think it's gonna help you continue. Maybe if, if there is some if, if there is another thing that came into my mind that's not that straightforward, I will just do it. But yeah, this is basically it. Bye.